First rule of being the hotel inspector is never assume you've seen it all. What is this place? I thought I was coming to some gangbanging convention. Yeah. I'm Alex Polizzi, and I'm an award-winning hotelier. Hello! But it's Britain's worst hotels that give me sleepless nights. There's a stench in here. I just check on the cesspit. This place just depresses me. I've seen the bizarre. I've got Lou Roll envy. That's never happened to me before. The ridiculous. Why would you have a poo brown feature wall? And the downright ugly. Ah! This has to rank as one of the ugliest rooms I've ever seen. <laughs> I've brought countless hotels back from the brink. Hoteliers think they know what to expect from me. I'm coming more prepared than ever. This is my first attempt at covert ops. No, I've had enough. You've had enough. Are you sure? I've had enough. Stick up for your business, for God's sake. Clearly, what I need to do is maybe punch him once or twice in the face. You can't be told. Tell what? Do you want to have an argument on no, the chain? No, we want to finish all the rooms. Punch his eyes. How do you work out what your occupancy is? I don't. I don't know how to do that. For God's sake. So struggling with this. This week... This does not look good, does it? A brand new venture... This is the next eight rooms that we're doing. ..launched at breakneck speed. Looks terrible. I think I'm having a bit of a panic attack. I keep getting palpitations. It's down to me to put the brakes on. Well, I'm looking to take over the whole street. Lordy, lordy, me, oh, I had I no really... idea what I was walking into. We don't have to say, yes, Alex, yes, Alex, yes, yes, Alex. They're not happy. Then we've got problems. There's lots of tackle here. Six months ago, former flooring shop owner John Sinclair convinced his mate Rob to invest in a new venture in the Merseyside resort of Southport. As much as it grieves me, I'd have to say that it was John's idea. He said, how do you fancy opening a craft ale bar? We never thought we would own a bar, but we do own a bar. We, you've got to believe you're going to achieve. Cheers, Anne. Business in the bar is booming, and having struck gold once, John now believes he's got the Midas touch. You just get the ideas as you wake up every day. You know, you think, well, that seems like a good one. And if people start agreeing with you, let's go for it. No sooner was the bar open than John moved on to his next big idea. You know, obviously, you can sit back or you can try and move forward. And we've seen an opportunity above us where there was uh, three apartments become available. Now they're in the midst of a major construction job costing £45,000 to create a 14-room hotel above the bar. We have no experience in hotels at all. We are literally winging it at the moment. I think this one's going to be one of the toughest rooms because it's just like... It's just a shithole, basically, isn't it? But the pair have a secret weapon. Why don't we just go in another room and I'll show you... John's missus. We do have the Melanie factor, which sort of straightens us both off. I've been up since six. Yeah, well, stop panicking. Right, well, I'm just saying I'm not standing round waiting for you're them to start You're not standing round. The all you're doing together. is making it worse. Just shut up. She's in the background all the time, harnessing. <laughs> Mel keeps a tight rein on the bar. <laughs> And John. Every day he wakes up and there's always something. Uh, sometimes he goes, Mel. I go, what? I was thinking. <laughs> and then you think, oh, God. But, yeah, he has some good ideas, some not so good. No, I've had enough. <laughs> You've Tell had me. enough. Are you Shush. have had enough. One of them was, uh, let's buy a sailing yacht and we're going to sail to Greece. I said, I can't sail. Can you? No. Can't be that hard. So we bought the yacht and the yacht's never seen water. I don't want you to talk. Right, I want you to listen. Oh, he's lucky, isn't Come he? Come on. Isn't he? I like to let John think he is, but I would say I was the boss. Southport summer season is on the horizon, and despite having only four rooms ready to pull in some cash, they've opened for business. I've booked this room out for uh, five weeks' time. Everything's at stake when you uh, open a new venture. We're, we're under a lot of pressure, financially and uh, stress-wise. Opening the business whilst they're midway through building it has done little to ease the stress levels. We have had some critiques. At the end of the day, you know, a bad review could cost you a lot of future income. So it's something that we need to, we need to take seriously. 
On top of the bad reviews, they're struggling to get bookings for the rooms that have opened. If the room's empty, it does send a cold chill down your back. We need a helping hand. I've arrived in Southport ready to surprise the fledgling hoteliers. Bob and Tom are the owners know I'm coming, but they don't know exactly when. The advantage to that is I'll see how they'll react to a proper surprise booking. I've checked in under a pseudonym, Mr. H. Smith, very cloak and dagger, quite exciting. I found the address, but no one is answering the door. But I'm not quite sure where to go and what to do. There's no sign on the door. There's no information about who to call. I guess I'll have to go to the bar. So instead of a warm reception, I have to make a rather awkward entrance into a local night spot. I am he. Nice to meet you, Howard. Thank you. Yeah. After a long day travelling, I'm ready to turn in and keen to see what I get for £50 a night. OK, so what do I need to know? Um, this is your bed. <laughs> Thanks. These are my chairs. These are your chairs. Yeah. If John's not back down in five minutes, I'll go and rescue him. <laughs> Leave him for ten. <laughs> <laughs> is that normal? <laughs> breakfast? Uh, breakfast is served from eight o'clock. Yeah, lovely. Um, it's an a la carte breakfast. Great. It's very nice one. If it's that good, I might join you. Where, where do I have it? In the bar? Next door. Next door at the other yeah. hotel, the Bold yeah. Hotel? Yeah. All right. OK, I'll see you in the morning. OK. All right. All right, good Thanks. night. They definitely did not make it clear that you had to check in in Peaky Blinders. I think that if it's a busy night, you would need to be able to ring a bell or something to get someone to pay attention to you, rather than having to fight your way through the drunken masses at the bar. For a brand new venture, this is all very laid back. I think we've been too relaxed here, cos I think she's going to go to town. The door itself is not very well illuminated. There's no buzzer. There's lots of attack on there. I'm in Merseyside. I've just spent the night at Southport's newest hotel, which has been created by absolute beginners. I really didn't sleep very well last night. Lying awake with my mind racing, trying to think how I would have done this room so that it wasn't quite so cramped. Because as soon as I walked in, I thought, well, that's a ridiculous little gap for someone to get through with a piece of luggage. I don't like the way that you're squashed right in to the desk as you walk in through the front door. I might just rearrange this room, then I could show them what a difference it makes. There's too much furniture in here. This is perfect for being on your own, but imagine being here as a couple. You start feeling slightly overwhelmed. The biggest luxury in a hotel is space. Overfilling a room is a real rookie mistake. Do you feel intimidated? No, or no, do you feel not intimidated. Have you got a little bit of anxiety? A little bit of a flutter in my heart for it. Have you got a little flutter, love? Yeah. I would be disappointed if... She, she wasn't happy with the room. Obviously, no one who knows me will be surprised to know I'm not a huge fan of plastic lavender. Hi, John. Hi, how's it going? I want to try and get this out. Thanks, darling. You can just shove that in the corner over there and then come in and see what I've done in the room. OK. I think that space is yeah. at su always at such a premium. So the first thing I noticed when he walked me in last night is I'm quite slim, but because that was here, there's, there's this very choice. little gap. Yeah. You never want to have two great big hoiking pieces of furniture together. Yeah. It feels a lot freer when you walk in, though. 
If you're going to sell it as a double bed, you have to have one undersheet yeah. that covers both beds. Yeah. This is just something that is designed for you to fall into. Inexplicable to me how you've only got the bathroom light over here. Yeah. Why do you not have the bathroom light on this wall somewhere? Because also, in the middle of the night, you're stumbling to the bathroom. How do yeah. you make sure you don't put on the Starship yeah. Enterprise lighting that you have well, on the ceiling? That's a, very, yes. that's a very good point. Um, actually, I think, by the way, that you've yeah. done lots of things nicely with this room. Thank you. I like the colour scheme. These aren't enormous rooms. Yeah. So room planning has just got to be completely right. Yeah. Actually, after a night here, I think I'm going to be able to be helpful to you. Great. OK. Look forward to that. And I'm looking forward to breakfast. But I won't be having it at the Regency Rooms. Frankly, I find it completely bizarre that I've been sent here to the competition. So you'd then think, having experienced this, having experienced the breakfast, why would anyone stay there rather than here? Thanks, Thanks darling. Lovely. <laughs> Whilst I enjoy dining out with the competition, John is about to prove his worth. They've got to try and keep one step ahead of Alex, because if there's any issue, she is going to pull them, so we're on to her. Come on, we've got a fight on our hands. We've got to get it right. She wants a double bed. Yeah, yeah. Zip and link them two beds together. Let's make her happy, Renata. <laughs> Very important. And I'm not the only woman on John's back. I'm really annoyed about the bed, though. Don't start. I'm not starting, but I told done. you yesterday. Well, let's get it done. Come on. Should have been done yesterday. Yeah. I'm getting a headache now. I've had a headache for 15 years. Yeah. I admire John's drive, but in the race to complete the build and open for business, there seems to be some confusion about exactly what the establishment is. On a TripAdvisor, it's called Regency Rooms. 14 brand new boutique apartments. I hate the apartment label. These are clearly not apartments. There's no kitchen, there's no living area, they're rooms. But it's slightly confusing the message because on Facebook it's called Regency Room Southport Hotel. Definitely don't think it's a hotel. It's rooms above a bar, as far as I can see. And they're good, cheap rooms, but that is what they are. They've made a novice mistake. If guests come expecting the full hotel experience or an apartment, they'll be very disappointed. However, John is about to get a gold star from me. Right. Right. While you've been out, we've uh, changed all the mattress, the, the bases, and um, Lovely. we just have the other little issue was... Ah! My bathroom light. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was done very quickly and very efficiently. Well done, you. Thank you. I'm so impressed. I mean, this is a man who does not let grass grow onto his feet. Now I can't wait to see the rest of the rooms. Identicate room, identicate problems. The same light switch on the wall for the bathroom. Just like the one I stayed in, John's also taking bookings for another three finished rooms. I'm not entirely sure that I would necessarily have made such enormous headboards. This is a kind of mistake. I mean, there's only... This is the only position in which you can open the cupboards. This should have gone under the window, and then you would actually have a little bit more space to get into the bathroom. This is a nice room. A lot more space. Some simple tweaks will make all the difference. But at the other end of the building, behind a false wall, it's a bomb site. And then we come through here. Yeah. This is the next rooms that we're doing. Uh, these will be finished on Friday tea time. Friday tea time? Gosh, so that's one brilliant. Room, seven days. Did you agree a budget for every room, or has it happened organically? The initial target, mentally, was like £5,000. Yeah. But we ended up spending about six and a half. We'll have invested by completion the best part of £90,000. At 50 quid a night, it will take some time to recoup their money. So the more rooms they have available, the better. How quickly can you do the other six rooms? OK, well... What's the schedule? We've got to be really pushing for eight weeks complete on the last six rooms. OK, so you've got quite an ambitious schedule. 
That will take them to 10 rooms. Once complete, they'll be at 14, and running them will be a full-time job. It's a bit bigger than room one. I like this a lot. But despite the amount of construction left to do, John's already on to his next big idea. Well, we've just acquired the jeweler's shop. Oh, my gosh. Which I'll, I'll show you later. Lordy, lordy, me, and, I had no even... idea what I was walking into. Are you empire building, you two? Trying to. It's a land grab. We've got plans for a, a small, snappy, trendy Spanish tapas bar. And then hell. I've done a deal. For... Is there a market for a snappy, trendy tapas bar? Well, when I used to go to Spain a lot years ago, yeah, yes. the best tapas bar was down a back alley, and it was fresh food. Oh, my God, darling, I, I know, but this yeah. isn't. This is Southport. What I've seen with people who are successful, if they do something and they do it right, they don't seem to fail. It takes tunnel vision to launch a new venture. Flitting from one idea to the next can be a recipe for disaster. I need to put the brakes on the tapas bar. Right, oh this is the gosh. back of the jewellers, which is connected to our chiller room. Oh, I see. So what I'm thinking is, 1st of August, you won't get this done for six weeks, probably. Then you'll have missed the summer rush. And so I personally would suggest to you, make sure you fill the rooms. I'm all for you doing this. But I honestly just think, why would you not just make something yeah. really solid before you get on with the next thing? So, should we start it four weeks later? Yeah, <laughs> first of September. That's right. exactly. Well, that's positive. Say. No, that is exactly. I'm not saying yeah. any more than that's that. That's good. John has to tackle one venture at a time. His ambition is dizzying, and with good reason. After the situation I've been in with my health and everything, I believe that if I've got an idea and I want to do it, and I am going to do it. Three years ago, I didn't feel so well. And uh, I thought it was stress. 12 weeks later, and they said, you've got cancer in your liver. So they said, well, we'll see if we can get you on the transplant list. And eventually, we got a call the week before we opened here. So I had my liver transplant, and, and that was it. I think him getting the transplant has changed his outlook on life, and I think he wants to live every day in the best way he can. What do you think about this whole venture and their, and their dreams of empire building? I'm actually very proud of the both of them. More so John, I have to say, because of what he's been through as well. The way he's put this together is fantastic. Keeps them going, gives them a reason to get up. Six months on and I can't fault John's passion, but it's critical he sticks to his promise to halt the tapas bar and puts all his energy into finishing the accommodation and I want to help him get this right. The challenge for you is to get the rooms as nice as possible and to make sure that the marketing is on track. You have got small bedrooms. You've got to start being wise and not making the kind of mistakes that you've made. You don't need a full double cupboard. Do you need two bedside tables mm. as well as a dressing table? Do you need two chairs? No. We should definitely have a bell on the door. On the website, there should be something that says, check in at Peaky Blinders. But the big problem with this venture goes beyond the check-in and the rooms. This business has an identity crisis. You're not a hotel. You're not apartments. You're not a bed and breakfast. What you have is service rooms with a really nice bar downstairs. Service rooms, it's a great idea. I think from a booking point of view, the service rooms is the, is the way to go, because the apartments, we haven't even got one. Yeah. <laughs> But you've got to start wiping out the traces of the Regency rooms. Yep, yep. Yeah. Come to us, save a few quid, spend it in the bar. Yeah. Yes, yeah. With an agreement to play it straight and sell this establishment as simply serviced rooms with a great bar, they've got a solid offer. I head off, leaving John and Rob to crack on. Well? Yes. Rob's got something to tell you. What? She's actually hit it right on the nail with yeah. service, rooms, service rooms, smart contemporary service, service rooms. rooms. Well, I, I think it's, I think that's... I have to digest that one. It sounds a bit like digs, like... I don't know. No. I, think I agree with get, the boutique department. Well, look, that. hang on, listen. Well, it's not set in stone. We don't have to agree to everything that she's, like, 
recommended no, but what we have to, to change, do is have a common, 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 take, common we identity. We have to have a chat yeah. about it. And, yeah. you know, not all argue. We don't have an argument. We have a discussion. You, we don't have to say, yes, Alex, yes, Alex, yes, Alex, yes, Alex. You can have a bit of passion in the fight and say, well, I don't really agree with that. Yeah, OK, you yeah, said that. I think it makes... It sounds tacky and cheap. I think they both fell a little bit in love with Alex, haven't they, and thought, well, she's just fantastic and let's do exactly what she says. At the Regency Rooms, the owners are midway through an ambitious construction project. They're racing to get six rooms done. The four they've completed are being sold online, claiming to be a hotel and luxury apartments. Being upfront about what they are, rooms above a bar is essential, and it cleverly positions the successful part of the business, the bar, at the very heart of their empire. My sound solution to play it straight has put the cat amongst the pigeons. John's partner, Mel, is dead against the change. I did like the idea of what Alex was forcing us down the road of uh, budget rooms, but as soon as Melanie said that she didn't like it, you know, I have to live with her. So I had to come back a little bit on my thoughts. Some of the points she's made I'm not very happy with, so I just want to discuss it with the staff, because they are involved. We can see what they say and see, maybe get some feedback off them. At the beginning of my hotel career, I was mentored by people who gave me many wise words of advice and helped me avoid the pitfalls, which makes it all the more surprising that this crowd aren't willing to listen to me. Right, guys, I've called you all in today because, uh, as you know, Alex Polizzi was here last week and she's made some uh, key points that I just want to discuss with you. One thing I wasn't happy about was, as you know, we're called Regency Rooms, boutique apartments. I agree with losing the boutique and I agree with losing the apartments, but Alex wants to totally rename it as Serviced Rooms. Now, I'm not happy about that. What do you think? No. I don't agree. You don't agree? No. Why? What do you think it means when Service she says Shaver's Rooms? It just makes it seem a bit cheap, and considering how much effort and stuff you put into each of the rooms, it's just going against everything that you've put into it, I think. Well, at the meeting with Alex, John and Rob sat with her, and they agreed to change it to Service Rooms, well, I've actually uh, which I wasn't I've happy thought. about at all. Well, what do you think, John? Because you did actually agree on the day with Alex. Did I really? You did, yeah. <laughs> um. I think I don't like service rooms. None of us are uh, up for that, so... But you two were like two nodding dogs. Yes, Alex, yes, Alex. <laughs> well, I was stuck behind you and I had to bite my tongue. Because I just couldn't right, believe we don't need all that now, do we? Service room. Yes, Alex. Yes, Alex. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, my love. Yes, my love. Yes, my love. Anything for you. Right, can we have a show of hands? Who's against service and budget rooms? Absolutely. I would like to just leave it as Regency rooms. Show of hands for that. And a proper description underneath. Sorry, Alex. It's just the way life goes, baby. It was a unanimous vote on the service rooms idea and budget. Um, we all thought it wasn't suitable to what we think we're offering, so we're not going to go ahead with that. Even John and Rob agreed, eventually. We've got to live with something that we all agree on and what we're happy with, and it won't be service rooms. I think I've unintentionally put Mel's nose out of joint. I just want to get this right. It seems that she's a decision maker. Who knew? There's no point the boys kind of agreeing with everything I say while I'm there. And then as soon as I've gone, they turn around and talk to Mel and she changes their minds. Well, I, I, I think the problem is that they've got a, a successful bar at the moment and new rooms, and the two things seem to have no correlation to each other. Not only are the team against my idea, despite a promise to put the brakes on any new ventures while they finish the rooms, now John's back to his old tricks. Right, we've got a new idea. We're going to turn this into a roof terrace. Uh, I've seen the idea in New York. It'll be the first one in Southport. It's a unique space. So, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be a good business plan. And that's not the only new scheme John's cooking up. We've just signed with the landlord now to open the uh, Spit Roast Organic Chicken Shop in the charity shop next door. So it's going to be a very busy corner because we'll have the organic chicken shop, Peaky Blinders, the tapas bar, and now we'll have this big roof terrace area. So, you know, it's getting quite big now. 
I'm looking to take over the whole street. We'll get there in the end. The magpie approach to acquiring businesses is really only appropriate if you've got more money than cents. The key to building an empire for the rest of us is to make sure that one business is working and secure before moving on to the next one. I'm getting worried, so I've called a meeting and this time they're coming to me. So when we meet Alex, you're not going to sidestep me, are you? And, you know, have a talk you into maybe doing it as service rooms. Depends how she looks at me. She looks what at about them. the way I look at you when she's saying service rooms? Does that I... not put, instill any fear into yeah, you at all? Yeah, it does, because it, <laughs> it brings me out the trance and back into normality. <laughs> anyway, what about uh, the Johnny Rocket chicken shop? <laughs> No, don't. Let's just get the rooms finished. Do you not want to know? No, because you just fast forward into something no, when I'm we not haven't fast even finished the we're last thing. We're concentrating on what we're doing with the bedrooms, but we have to have something in the pipeline because you can't just finish it. That. Of course and you can. You can just finish and it and, and go, just sit oh, back maybe for like 24 look. hours and have a rest. No. Oh, mm. right. You can't be told. That's no, your I'm problem. Not. Tell what? You can't be told anything. You can't be told anything at all. What? You, what? Uh, what? All I'm saying is, let's finish all the rooms. We are finishing all the rooms. Do you want to have an argument on no, the train? No, we in the are finishing of the all the rooms, right? right. The trio have made it to London, but before they've even got to me, John's off again. Melanie, what do you reckon to that? He's spotted a disused tube station, and he's decided it's ripe for development. Hello. You've got the roof terrace. I think I can see that this is the lads coming from Southport and opening the Peaky Blinds in London. And let's not get carried away, look. Let's go, come on. I think it's going to be a very, very positive day. I feel good already. I am determined to rein John in and get all three of them to see the merit in the simple offer of uniting rooms and a great bar. I've recruited the big guns to help me. I'm going to take them to marketing branding experts, and if they can't convince them, then I'm going to give up. Hello. All right, Alex. Hi, darling. So I've brought you to a branding agency, Underscore, who I've worked with before and who I think are really good. The advantage being that Neil, who we're going to go and see and work with, is from Southport. Is he? And I'm hoping that where I can't convince you about what route to find, he will be able to, or at least he'll be able to find a route through together. Neil Stanhope is a branding whiz. He helps businesses recognise their best assets and then builds a brand around them. Hopefully I can bring a little bit of local knowledge to this today. Neil's done his homework, but before he gives his opinion, he wants to speak to each partner one-on-one. -on -one. How would you describe the values of the Regency rooms? Quality decor, extreme cleanliness. It's fresh, it's clean. The hygiene thing's very important. I would say luxurious, Neil, because I think they are. How did the name come about? I suggested the name for the rooms. I picked Regency rooms. It just sounded catchy. But it sounds a bit posh, actually. Was there ever a conversation about maybe using the Peaky Blinders name for the accommodation or the rooms? We wanted to call it something totally different. Uh, and give it a tone, identity, really. What would be your vision for the business? I would have liked to have waited. I would have liked to have had Peaky's for at least 12 months before we started the rooms upstairs. A lot in a short time. Yeah, very, uh, yeah absolutely. Well, what about the New York-style open-air rooftop terrace? <laughs> Well, I haven't had a chance to even have a discuss that or look at that. And so the chicken shop? No. I'm not. <laughs> Amazing. Let's just. Amazing. <laughs> I've not even heard about the chicken shop. Yeah, <laughs> I know. John does tend to think I'm Superwoman as well. By the way, you know, I feel um, it's just pushed me to the limit a little bit. Mm. Something that's really struck me is that you're moving at different speeds, and I think that doesn't work in no. terms of a business. You've moved so quickly, yeah. and opportunities have presented themselves, and you've been yeah. presented with a slice of luck. Yeah. But the thing that creates success in business is luck and planning. Yeah. If we'd have actually slowed down a bit, taken that moment to say, right, what is the best thing that we've got so far? And it's, it's actually the bar and the name of the bar. They warned me about my ambition and uh, chasing forward, and I feel as though that's come from Rob and Mel. 
I thought we were going in there as a team, and if they're not happy, then we've got problems. The purpose of today is to unify everyone behind a clear concept. Time to hear Neil's branding wizardry. The first point is to leverage the name itself. Something as simple as Peaky Blinders accommodation and bar. Your brand is your experience. It is the experience that people have when they walk through those doors that you've created. We want to try and achieve the same thing for what is currently called the Regency Rooms. OK, so welcome to Peaky Blinders, bar and accommodation. Our pub offers a delightful selection of craft ales and a warm, comfortable stay in our rooms above. We're not over-promising, we're not under-delivering. We could take maybe some of these images and actually put them maybe on a cushion so or to actually that. use them as wallpaper. Yeah. It's synchronistic and people can feel that they're actually in one entity and therefore, if they like it downstairs, they're going to love it upstairs. I think they've just switched the light on, haven't they? Yeah. And they think it's a, a fantastic, simple idea. It's given us a boost. I think we've achieved a lot today. Neil's shown them how much they can leverage interest and enthusiasm and business from their bar. John has really been told quite firmly that he's got to slow it down and rein it back, and he's taken that point on board. Well, I've never heard of it ever. We were always united in our ambitions, but we weren't quite sure how to get there. Peaky Grand is accommodation and bar. Tough as my chicken shop. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, are you sure that street on the side? It is, it's bum bum. The bubble's in the middle. In Southport, true to form, there are no flies on John. Another inch, Henry. The Regency Henry. Rooms is no more. Half an inch that way. That's it, that's it. Yeah, it's annoying because we've only just put the Regency Room signs up three weeks ago, but it's now looking good and it looks right, so... Peaky Blinders Bar and Accommodation is nearly ready for business. After an exhausting few weeks of hard graft, stage two of the development, once a chaotic building site, has become six more stylish bedrooms completed within John's tight schedule. The new brand is online, and today, for the first time, there'll be a full house. Well, that looks nice, doesn't it? We've got the launch in 124 minutes, which is two hours and four minutes by my clock. So, um, it's just getting a bit tight now. Well, this has got to be absolutely mint yeah. for 12 o'clock. There's lots to do. There's a day's work, and everyone's got an hour to do it. So we'll just have to smack everyone's asses and get them revved up. I'm back in sunny Southport to guide my hotel beginners through their first night running at full tilt. Going from four rooms to ten rooms is a big jump, and they've got another four to add by the end of the summer. So, you know, 14 rooms is not a joke to manage. It really isn't. It's going to be a hub of activity if they're as busy as they need to be to get the money coming in. Tonight is a chance to stress test the guest experience, and I've made sure they're fully booked. I've invited people to stay in the 10 rooms. I'm going to encourage them to review their experience from check-in to check-out and everything in between. It shouldn't be that difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible to fuck up because anything is possible. Yeah, you can see that. You should button it together. It looks terrible. I think I'm having a bit of a panic attack. I keep getting palpitations. I'm feeling a bit scared, do with an hour to go to guests arriving, I'm hoping to see the finished article, a unified establishment. Hello. Hi, Alex. My darling. How are you? Good. How My you? vision of happiness. <laughs> How are you? Thank you. So, ten rooms ready today? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can I go and have a look and of see the state yeah. of things? <laughs> wow. That looks great. I love it. I mean, this is a statement door, if ever I've seen one. It's really cool. I bet you thought I wouldn't like the door, but I love it. And for any guests arriving, there's an age-old device. Oh, very period. It's a period doorbell. A bell to alert staff next door in the bar. Ah. 
but what awaits guests inside? It looks like they've pulled a bit of a blinder. Last time I was here, all this was a building site, and I just cannot quite believe how much they've managed to get done. The rooms have been finished at breakneck speed, but they don't disappoint. This looks so much better. They've heeded my advice and ditched the giant furniture, giving even the smaller rooms the luxury of space. So a lovely slimline, much smaller wardrobe, still from the same range, but much neater. There are now some key pieces that tie the rooms to the bar. And in the corridors, a self-service drinks machine for that early morning caffeine hit. For this kind of money, you can stay somewhere and you can stay in a complete shithole, or Voila, you can stay in this tastefully appointed, extremely spacious, well-spaced planned room. As my final inspection continues, it turns out I've not won all the battles. I personally don't like these great big lumping chairs in here, uh, but their choice. Got to get this fixed before the guests come. I'm getting rid of that. I'm not even going to ask. I'm going to go and throw it in John's face. And then this... <sighs> I don't know, it just looks a bit creased and crunkled. There's no room folders yet. I mean, this does not look good, does it? I mean, you'd think that they would have made an effort to tidy it all away before having people come and stay in these rooms. Ten minutes before guests come up, so, you know, they need to get on with it. A plant pot. Get rid of that. Bin it. Yeah. John rallies the troops and they go into overdrive. All this shite off here in there, bolted off. OK? Now, I've never, ever done a hotel opening that isn't completely mad at the last moment. However much forward planning there is, however many hands there are, you always need more people, more time. Ah! Check every room, you know, right through every corner, every door, every bin, everything, Joseph. The bar is filling up with Southport's finest. There's just time to grab a moment with the team. So, Hi. it feels very different. Yeah. It feels great. I love the new front door. I like the signage. Everything is looking good. So I've got 10 people coming. What I'm looking for mainly is welcome, check-in procedures, whether they've been tightened up, encouraging them to come down, have a drink in your lovely bar, and any queries that they have, they can come to you and see you deal with those queries competently. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. The first guests are here. The job of checking them in has been given to barman Elliot. Hi. Check in. Yes, please. He's using a new techie booking system. But maybe he'd have been better off with a piece of paper. Back again now? That's okay. Uh, so you're in room one, I'll just grab your keys for you and then I'll take you. Okay, thank you. While Elliot is seeing the first couple to their room, guests are coming thick and fast. I'm not quite sure where we're supposed to be here. Oh, hello. <laughs> Elliot's doing his best to handle a full house. Enjoy your stay, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. But there's little time to settle guests in properly. Just looking for the light switch. <laughs> you see the light switch? Think, well, I don't know. Where's the light? Yeah. The staff need to be trained a bit more on the room side. There needs to be a formula for checking in. There needs to be information given, always in the same way. It could still be tightened up considerably. Soon guests take to their tablets. First impressions count, and I've asked them to tweet me with theirs live from the rooms. It's a lovely room, but, oh, springy bed. Not sure about this. One can't find a hairdryer. Looking for some drawers. There aren't very many drawers in the rooms, that is true. Good first impression. Oh, no. Informative pack Wi-Fi password is incorrect. I'm a bit concerned the owners are missing in action. Rob's doing a lot of sitting around and chatting. I don't know where John is, disappeared to, and Mel's also sitting down and chatting. When launching a business, the people involved often retreat to their comfort zones and just stick to what they know best. But actually, everyone has to get stuck in. 
When I track John down, he gets a push in the right direction. Okay, there. That's lovely. Thanks. Okay. All the information is here if you need anyone. Thank you very much. All right, we'll look forward to seeing you in the bar. Okay. Okay. Oh, very nice. That's nice. 50 pounds. Um, I think it's quite a reasonable price. Because Southport normally can be quite expensive. Hopefully, they'll have a little chill. Yeah. Have a good chat about the room. Yeah. Give us a good report. Yeah. And then come down here and have a bevy. And, uh, and if we can see a good report coming in, they're getting a free bevy. I know. <laughs> good. Very good. Very clever. And that's the joy of this simple but clever business model. The room rate's a budget, but the bar is the draw. Cheers. Where guests are proving they're only too happy to spend their time and their money. Have I transformed the trio, though? I do not think they're hoteliers, actually. Such a short time, I don't think I've instilled that into them. But they are people people. That is really going to make a big difference in the long run. What they don't already know, they will learn. I thought today went really well. I think there's some obvious teething problems. I'm really hoping that you're going to get some great reviews from tonight. I've told all of the guests to leave a proper review when they check out. I'm leaving here feeling very cheerful, incredibly impressed at all of you for having worked so hard. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Alex. Alex. Thanks for and thank you for coming as well. Pleasure. I My pleasure. It. Absolutely loved every minute. Yeah. Susie. Speak, speak for yourself. He yeah. <laughs> keeps rolling over going, Alex. Oh. <laughs> no one in bed. I've got more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't <laughs> believe you for a second. The morning after the night before. The guests have departed and the final reviews are live and online. The proprietors are lovely people. They must have met me and you then. Especially like the complimentary toiletries. We would have appreciated two tub chairs in our room to relax with. Well, well, you can't get them in. Well, they weren't in there, but Alex took them out. Very proud. Very, very proud of Melanie. She's a rock you can't smash. Right, our Why room was to... a little too small and yeah. very hot, but yeah. the weather can't be helped, and they were very understanding and helpful in providing us with a fan in the room, a true gem. Oh. We're not hoteliers. Not yet. We've got a long way to go. But we'll get there in the end. Location mm. was great, and the staff were lovely, especially Mel. And? John. <laughs> definitely <laughs> worth the price. That's positive, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? After the situation I've been in with my health and everything, I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not organised enough. I'm not ready to go anywhere. Now I feel I've achieved something, and I feel like, you know, if anything did happen to me, I've got there's something there for Melanie now and my family. So yeah, I am proud. <laughs>